Hi, I'm Maura Pierlow. I'd like to read you my play, On the Farm, which appears in this wonderful anthology, Tell Them They're Dreaming, Bedtime Ballads and Tall Tales from the Australian Bush. My poem is based on a true story. I moved to Australia nearly 30 years ago from New York City after I met an Aussie farmer and shearer who I ended up marrying. Um, here we go. On the farm. My cousins were coming to visit our farm. Just city meets country, no need for alarm. The moment I heard a loud engine then doors, I ran out the back and abandoned my chores. We're finally here. That car trip was too long, my cousins insisted, and they were not wrong. Out came the esky, their bags and a ball, a cricket set, long boards, then more gear to haul. Hey, where are the sheep? All my cousins did ask. To them, sheep are toys, but for us, they're a task. They're out in the paddock, I said, near the shed. You're shearing, they blurted, and ran off ahead. My dad had just finished his last shearing run and put down his handpiece to greet everyone. Sweat dripped down his brow as some beaded on mine. My auntie just smiled, said the heat was divine. You hungry? Dad asked. I can round up a lamb or a pig, he suggested, if you prefer ham. The mouths on my cousins dropped down to their chins with awkward new thoughts about how meat begins. Then just as the sun was beginning to set, tomorrow the mowing, Mum said, don't forget. The eyes of my cousins popped open real wide at grass all around the far acres they spied. You mow with a ride on, we'll help you, okay? But not with a push one, we'd be here all day. I wanted to trick them, but had too much heart. The sheep eat all that, we just mow this one part. Thank goodness, they shouted as mom called out, tea, that's dinner, I told them. Smells good, but we'll see. We washed our hands twice before taking a seat. The veggies were served and then two types of meat. The looks on their faces showed dread and dismay. My cousins unable to find words to say. They eyed our new dog, hoping she'd snatch the meat, but there was too much for a young pup to eat. Remember your visit, they asked, just last year? How could I forget such a strange atmosphere? I'd never seen so many cars, I explained, or people and pets in one city contained. And right in that moment I knew we're the same. When out of our comfort zone, no one's to blame. I looked at their meat, which I snuck from my plate, but ate it too quickly and needed to wait. I munched on their ham, then I took a third chop. They smiled as I chewed. There was no time to stop. My cousin's jaws dropped and their eyes opened wide. Their plates were now empty with no food to hide. My, my, you're good eaters, Mum said to us all. Have some more meat so you'll grow nice and tall. No, no, I cried out. There was no time to waste. I'd eaten so much my taste buds couldn't taste. We need to save room for dessert, I tricked Mum. She nodded, amazed we could fit in a crumb. And then I remembered, they're here for a week. Six more cousin dinners, a meat-eating streak. Thanks for listening. Check out the link to order your copy of the anthology today. Hope you enjoy it.